Hello everybody, today we're gonna to talk about twisting during your push-ups. So twisting can occur at the hips generally or at the shoulders as well. Um, and the fix is kind of similar for both of them. So what does it look like? If I'm doing my push-up, you might see one hip a little bit lower than the other one like this. So if I let my left hip fall down, I feel my right inner thigh a lot more, my right ab a lot more. Maybe I'm holding on to those because I don't have the opposite muscles, right? So this can be a very normal position that we see. You might also see just kind of the shoulders twisting a little bit. And that can be related to the stiffness that you have in the shoulders or the movement that you have in the shoulder blade. Fixes, like very detailed fixes for this, are just that, they're very detailed. They can be very complicated and it's very dependent on how you present. Uh, I don't think it's feasible to go through that in a video on YouTube, but I will say that there are some modifications that kind of work across the board. So to allow yourself to keep doing push-ups and doing them in a way that's not going to uh, adversely affect you, you have to find a way to objectively evaluate this first and foremost. So film yourself or have someone watch you and look for what you see. So basically if my hips are turning I have to turn them back and hang on to that while I do my push-up. So as you come down, it increases the demand of the exercise, so you may need to re-cue yourself once you get to the bottom. If you're twisted at the top like this, you can untwist, and you come down, you might be twisted again, so you have to untwist and see what it feels like. As my hips twist, everything in my upper body has to follow suit or has to uh, compensate so that I don't fall over. So you'll feel different pressures in your upper body because of that. If I have one arm, this is a good transition into the upper body stuff. So let's say my left shoulder is really stiff, but my right shoulder moves a lot. So as I come down, I don't want to turn into my left shoulder. So I'll try to keep my weight over on my right side and I'll open up towards my left shoulder so it doesn't have to move so much, like this. Now I'm exaggerating it a little bit so you can see it, but that position might feel totally normal to you, but if you look at it objectively on camera, it looks weird, it looks wrong, right? So this one is a hard one, the twisting stuff is hard because what feels normal um, is not necessarily correct. And when you do correct it, it feels so wrong. So it's hard to maintain it. You have to say, okay, well, objectively that looks better. So I have to keep doing it. <laughs> no other way to convince yourself. Um, cool. Oh, we talked about shoulder stiffness and the turning. So now I don't want you to turn. That's the basic cue. I need to make sure you're Tires stay straight on the road going forward and your headlights stay pointed with them. That's hip and shoulder position, respectively. Um, as I go through this though, you might notice different weaknesses. So when I did the shoulder turn, I was loading my right arm a lot. And if my right arm's stronger, then it'll be fine. But if I start to shift and I um, reorient myself in the middle here, I'm gonna take these off reorient myself in the middle, I start to load my left arm more and it might not be able to keep up. And so when it tires out, I'm just gonna go back to what I know. I'm gonna go back to that twist, to that loading of the right arm. Now, I don't wanna do that because what I'm trying to do is train the right pattern. I don't wanna just train a general pushing pattern however I can do it. I want to encourage my body to develop endurance in the right positions so that I can um, continue to exercise without wearing myself down so much. My, you know, not my muscles down, my joints, my ligaments, that kinds of stuff. Um, so I need to be cognizant of how much volume of training I'm doing, how much weight I'm doing. I may need to not do push-ups from the ground. I may need to elevate my hands on a bench or on a barbell and a power rack. It's a good way to reduce the load but keep the position. I can keep training my ab position and I can keep cueing my 
uh, joint rotation stuff so that that's correct, but I decrease some of the intensity of the exercise so that I can find a way to train myself in the right positions. So big modification, lower the weight, okay? I wanted to give you the long explanation because it's hard for the ego to accept that sometimes. But it's okay, look at it very objectively and that's a good way to convince yourself. Trust me. <laughs> um, second other way is outside of just reducing the intensity demands by maybe bringing my hands up to a wall, I can also reduce the range of motion demands. And sometimes this might be particularly important. I think that's gonna be less important for a hip rotation kind of thing. That's more about the motor control of what's going on. Some people though have a lot of guarding. Maybe they had a previous shoulder injury. They got a lot of guarding around one of their shoulders and it doesn't move that much. And so if I try to come all the way down to the ground like this, there's nothing I can do but twist because one of my shoulders has run out of motion. Okay. So in that case, I need to not go all the way down, right? I need to maybe stop with my arms 90 degrees. And that is just a normal for me. That is my normal range of motion. So consider that again, that's another one that's kind of hard for the ego to accept. So watch it, pay attention to how you feel. If it feels like you're twisting, uh, maybe don't go quite as low. Maybe in a month you can go a little bit lower. Try again. Sometimes that stuff loosens up. Sometimes you need dedicated mobility work and maybe physical therapy. So consider looking into that. That's not stuff we can get into today. Hopefully that was helpful. That was twisting during your push-up.